fast on the back of pipe 276. Uh, today I received a delivery from the Pipe Club of London. Um, this is the 2021 club pipe and it was offered together for an extra charge um, together with a celebratory tamper for the 50th anniversary um, of the Pipe Club of London made by Mastro de Paya. So this is made by Chacon and we'll get to that in a second. Um, this is a, as I say, it's a 50th anniversary tamper. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous piece of briar. 50th anniversary, 1970 to 2020. And it has the Pipe Club of London logo on the top there. And it has the sundial emblem for Mastro de Paya. Mastro de Paya. And it's got a brass tamper cap on the end. And it's, it's actually done so precisely. And it's got a pick inside. And that's uh, probably a little bit of acrylic or ebonite or something. Hopefully not ebonite, don't want that discoloring. But in any event, it's beautifully made. Just absolutely symmetrical. It's got a really nice heft to it. So for tamping, it's just ideal. And it's a, a beautiful accessory to have on your desk. Absolutely fantastic. I'm delighted with it. Um, the Pipe Club of London may have more, I don't know. It's worth uh, getting in touch. Um, so that's the tamper. <clears throat> so the pipe. Um, I was on the weekly Zoom session with Professor Jeremiah. Um, I actually smoked this pipe straight away as soon as I pretty much I got it this afternoon. I smoked it this evening. Just uh, loaded it with a honey coating and then loaded it with some... Um, Quantum from 2013 from McClellan, a nice rich uh, Virginia tobacco. Um, I was kind of in two minds whether to go aromatic or not, but I decided just to uh, play it safe in case I didn't want to. I could always go aromatic later. So I just went with a flavorful Virginia. I like to always break in a pipe with something rich. Um, number one, to get a good flavor into the pipe straight away, and two, um, to mask that new briar flavor. To be honest, the honey does help with that as well, so it's basically okay. What I tend to find is the first smoke is better than the second, third, and fourth, and by the time you get to the fifth, sixth, seventh, you're kind of already getting into breaking into the pipe. It takes a lot longer to get the best out of it, but it's you kind of get past that initial stage after half a dozen bowls. Um, so pipe should come, a little pipe sucker. It looks like a, a Hessian kind of pipe suck. or uh, just a rough cotton. So as I say, I have smoked it once. It's a bulldog. And there it is. It's got a, a sterling silver band, diamond shank. The base, the bottom half is sandblasted, then there's two rings, and then you have a smooth top rim. It's nice and lightweight. I haven't actually weighed it, but um, it's uh, very comfortable to smoke. Um, and all in all, um, it smoked very well. Um, I, as I say, I loaded it with Quantum. Um, I pretty much smoked it down to the heel without any trouble at all. There was a, a hint of gurgle for about a split second, um, but um, I just tilted the pipe down and that was that, it was done. Um, and I smoked it all the way down to the heel, a little tap and a little speck of ash came out and that was it. So that's a really good sign. It's very well drilled, position-wise. It's right at the nadir of the bowl. Um, I, w I did say when I was uh, loading the bowl on the zoom session that I'm, I was going to drill it out because the drill looks to be either three or three and a half mil, which is I usually go for four and a half mil. Um, but I'm not sure that I need to. It, it actually smoked very, very well. Um, it could be that if it had a wider drill, maybe I wouldn't have had that gurgle. I don't know. Um, but it was only for a split second the gurgle, really nothing to be concerned about. Um, so a lovely little pipe. So uh, shout out to the Pipe Club of London to John, the treasurer, and to Bernard, the president, and uh, all the other people who uh, work behind the scenes to keep the club going. Thank you very much. Big thank you to you all. I know that there was a Zoom session this evening which I missed, um, but uh, I would have liked to have joined, especially to, to light up this pipe, but um, I just missed it. Um, uh, by the time I got in, it was already after nine o'clock, which I'm sure it was finished already by then. Um, I think they usually go for about an hour. So unfortunately I missed out, nothing I can do about it, uh, hopefully next time.
Um, yeah, so that's the Pipe Club of London Pipe uh, for 2021, 51st year. Um, and it's actually very early in the year that we've got it. Usually we get it a bit later, so very cool. So thanks, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Well, I forgot. I also got some cigars, some singles. <clears throat> I ordered these from GQ Tobaccos. Um, they had some limited editions. I mean, they've always got some, um, but um, I decided to buy a few. Um, so here they are. So the first one is a Great Britain regional edition from La Gloria Cubana. I haven't tried this one yet. So I think each of these I will probably do a video when I smoke them. They're going to sit in the humidor for a little bit to settle down. And then we have the 2019 Quai d'Orsay um, Senadores uh, or Senador. Um, a nice Vitola, very nice. Um, I, I'm not sure, I haven't looked it up. Uh, I would say it's probably a 48 or a 50 by six inches probably. A lovely, lovely Vitola. I really like that size. That's that one. And finally, Romeo and Juliet, or Romeo y Julieta, 2018, limited edition. Um, I have to say, Romeo and Juliet has really been growing on me as a Habanos brand. Um, I've uh, always sort of said that my go-to is uh, the H. Altman Connoisseur number one, and so far that hasn't changed, although I haven't got any, but um, I've really been enjoying the Romeo and Juliet White Churchills, the flavor. I mean, I've had them in the past. Uh, a couple of years back, I managed to get a few aged uh, boxes, um, in boxes of 10, um, I had two or three of those, and they had a fantastic sort of a reddish brown, uh, like a rusty kind of complexion on the on the wrappers, and they just tasted amazing. Um, and I've kind of always tried to relive that and get the same kind of quality, but I haven't since. But nevertheless, they've been very good. I'm currently working my way through a box of ten from twenty either eighteen or nineteen. It's just got a year or a year and a half on, and they taste great. They're not at their best, but they're definitely smokable. Um, that's one downside of buying on the internet is that you tend to get the very latest. Um, produce so right now you're going to get from 2020 or 2019 um, if you get 2018 you're lucky um, so that's really what I'm su not suffering is the wrong word I'm not suffering but the the, the last couple of purchases that I've made um, was uh, some Romeo sorry uh, Ramon Ayones specially selected um, luckily that box is 2019 so at least it's got a year and a half maybe two years on it by the time uh, it got boxed and packaged you know maybe a year and a half if I'm lucky um, and I got some Partagas D5s, I think. Um, a little bit smaller than the D4. But those are from 2020 and they're just not ready to smoke. Um, they just don't taste good at all. And I got some punches as well. Uh, punch, punch, I think I got. Um, yeah, so that's, these are the punch. Short the punch, sorry. So this is turning into a cigar video. So um, I think it's a 50 ring gauge. It's a robust size, a really good size. Perfect for me. But they're just really full of ammonia. They're just not ready. So I've had one to try and then they're just gonna have to sit for a while. Slightly smaller, but similar to, still in that range, in the Robusta range. And these are from, from May 2020. The punches are also from 20, so they're really, they're just not ready. Both of these, the punch and the Partagas, both not ready. That's the only downside uh, with uh, buying online, is that you just don't know what you're getting in terms of a date. You buy from a company that you trust, so you're getting legit stuff. But uh, because they're shifting you know, big amounts of, of cigars, they, they generally don't have stock for long. Um, so you don't get any aged stuff. Occasionally, 
they might get a, an aged batch from Habanos, so they'll sell them out, but you have to be lucky to get one which is two or three years old. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to doing these. The advantage of getting the limited editions, although in my experience, overall, um, I prefer the regionals, um, but there have been some cracking um, limited editions, certainly. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying these. The limited edition Romeo and Juliet's that I've had have been very nice. Um, the 2016, um, I think there was one in 2013, mm, possibly. I think there was a 2013 and a 2016. And they, um, I might still have one of them in my singles box. Hang on. I already had and already bought a Kidor CB4. Okay, fine. Two. One more for me. Right, so the other one that I've got, Romeo and Juliet, is from oh, 2009. I think this is the the Duke. Possibly. There's one which was called the Duke, which is a very, was a very much sought after cigar. I think I've got another. A Pyramides somewhere, oh, right in front of my nose, 2005, maybe this is the Duke, one of those, one of the two is called the Duke, um, and it's supposed to be a fantastic cigar, that's probably why I'm supposed to be here, um, let's see if I can fit that in there, I don't think I can get any more in this box, maybe this one, go across, yep, okay, so, um, so you should be seeing videos on these cigars, in the near future. I've got a couple of others which um, have been waiting for, for videos for a while now, so I'm not sure which ones will go first, but uh, we will get there in due course. For now, I'm going to wish you all well, and I will catch you on the next one.